This here is Scout by Morbot, a robot that can go ahead and monitor, explore, and discover. So let's talk about monitor. This robot features a 1080p HD front camera with built-in night vision. Not only that, it also has four-wheel drive with omnidirectional wheels for better movement. Now it features motion sensing as well as a cloud storage so your data is always safe. This robot here can go ahead and autonomously patrol 24 seven using a variety of different triggers based off of sound, sensors, as well as events based off of home security system. It can go ahead and recognize human bodies and pets, as well as being able to detect and avoid obstacles using smart sensing. Not only that, it can go ahead and find its own charging station and return back to it automatically when needed. The Scout comes with a graphically programmed interface, allowing you to go ahead and even have entry people to go ahead and program this robot for your own custom needs. So that gives you a little bit of an idea what the Scout's about. So let's go ahead and unbox this thing. Now this here's our packaging, this here's our box, kind of shows you a little bit in terms of what's happening. So you do have the robot here kind of appearing about, it says monitor, discover, explorer, their slogan. It's an autonomous mobile robot. As you kind of rotate it on the back, it talks about a little more in terms of detail. So you can go ahead and monitor from afar, so remotely you can go ahead and control it. it works with both Google and Alexa, which is really cool. It's a pet companion, so you can go ahead and interact with the pets. Uh, it's a robotics, educational, and development platform, so you can program it based on your own liking for both uh, beginners as well as experts. Now you can even autonomously patrol 24 seven based off of different triggers. And of course it does come with an app where you can see, control and do more with more about Scout, which we'll be doing in a little bit. Let's open it up and see what's inside. All right, so it comes in a nice box. Definitely use this for like uh, storage. So one, you do get a quick start guide, kind of explaining how to go set this up and how to quickly just kind of jump right into it. There is a QR code to go ahead and scan, allowing you to go ahead and connect to your robot. Now we have our charge station here. So it does come with two different sticky pads. So you can mount this somewhere uh, and you can actually see the flag there. The robot will be able to detect this and go back to its charging station based off of that. You do get your USB cable. This will allow you to directly plug it into the wall and charge it. And then last but not least, you get your Morbot Scout. First thoughts, actually has a very nice solid appearance. You do see the omnidirectional mechanum wheels right there. The line glide about. Uh, you do have a nice interface screen. Uh, it looks like you do have your expansion port on the top. You have some LEDs on the top as well, probably indicating battery life. You have your power button here on the side, reset button two on the back. Uh, you do have your charging pins on the bottom for the base station. It uh, looks like you have some screws. And then of course you do have your camera, which is on the top over here. So you do have your mode button here for your Wi-Fi direct mode and your Wi-Fi router mode. Uh, line go ahead, toggle between the two in case if you happen to take this robot somewhere else and you wanna use it outside of your home base system. And that is that in a nutshell. So very simple and this here's everything that you get with it. So the next thing we're gonna look at is how to install the app as well as register an account. It's actually quite simple. You need either a smartphone like one of these or a smart tablet featuring Android OS 6.0 or an iOS 11.0 or greater. It's also important to note that the smartphone must support dual Wi-Fi band capability, both 2.4 gigahertz as well as 5.0 gigahertz. All right, so let's go ahead and start off with our iOS device first. And we're gonna click on the app store here and we're gonna look for our Morbot Scout. All right, and then from there, we'll download it and then click open. So this here is our main hub. We're gonna go ahead and click on sign up and then we're gonna register via email. And then we're gonna verify it via six digit code which should come in your email. If it's not in your main email, be sure to check out your spam. Okay, now it says, would you like to receive notifications? This is very important, especially uh, if the robot detects something, it has to report back to you. So alerting that is actually very important. So up next, we're gonna do is connect it to our Android device. So we're gonna go open up our Play Store and we're gonna look for our Scout app. More about Scout, I'm gonna click on that and we'll click on open. Now it's asking us to access our photo, media and files on this device. So you wanna make sure you click allow and we're gonna click log in or sign up. So in this case here, since we were already created an account with our iOS device, we're gonna be logging in with our Android device. 
And just like that, you can go ahead and download it on your Android device. The first thing we want to do is turn on our Scout. But before we do, if this in fact is a used model that you purchased, you want to make sure you reset it. Now the way that works is quite simple. On the back here is a reset button. So all you have to do is find a tool or some kind of pen, press the reset button for a few seconds, and it should notify you with the beep that it has been resetted. There we go, just like that, it is officially resetted. We'll go ahead and open up our Scout app here. Uh, so it says monitor, discover, explore, and this here will be our main hub. So you do see monitor, patrol, program. Now on the top right, it says disconnect, it says no Wi-Fi, and then you have settings. So we're gonna click on disconnect, and then we're gonna connect to our Scout's Wi-Fi. So we're gonna look for our Scout in our Wi-Fi settings, and we're gonna click connect. Now the default password is R0123456. So once we click join, we can go ahead and go back into our app and it should give us our next prompt once it's fully connected. From there, we can go and assign our own custom password to override the original. And it's gonna ask us if we wanna connect via remote Wi-Fi. So this allows it to connect to directly into your home's Wi-Fi. So if you're out and about, you can go ahead and control it remotely. So we're gonna click no for right now. Now on the top right, it indicates which setting it's in. So right now it shows a phone connected to our Scout, meaning it's connected via Wi-Fi direct mode. So this here will give you more better latency and allows you to go ahead and control it a little bit easier. Now you also have your Wi-Fi, you have your battery life, and then you have your settings mode. Setting modes allows us to go ahead and connect to it, change the password, video in terms of resolution, anti-flickering, night vision, bit rate, display rate, and a variety of other things. Control allows us to go ahead and see the sensitivity that we can allow to calibrate, uh, including the IMU sensor. And then the system allows us to go ahead and control the different sound effects, detect a siren effect. So you have a variety of different things that you can do. All right, so the next thing we'll look up is how to go ahead and set up the Wi-Fi router mode. Now it's important to note that when Scout doesn't have any home Wi-Fi configured, users can't press the Wi-Fi button on the side to switch between Wi-Fi direct as well as Wi-Fi router mode. When users set the first home Wi-Fi router, the bot will automatically connect to the Wi-Fi router mode and join the network. Now, after that, then you can go ahead and press this button here and switch between the two different modes. So just keep that in mind when you first get it, you do have to connect to your home Wi-Fi to make it work. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. So the next thing we'll do is configure our Wi-Fi router mode. So under settings, we can find our current Wi-Fi of our home in this case and connect to it uh, via directly of the Scout. So there we are. So now that we've successfully configured our Wi-Fi router mode, I can be out and about and control our robot remotely. Now, Scout tends to link to the 5.0 gigahertz Wi-Fi as a priority, but 2.4 gigahertz can go ahead and give a wider coverage over a specific area. Now, it's also important to note that only WPA2 protocol is supported. Now that we have our home Wi-Fi configured, we can go ahead and switch between the two different modes by simply pressing the Wi-Fi button here on the side. jump into monitor. Monitors allows us to see what the robot is seeing as well as being able to control it freely. In order to go and start using it, you can see that there's a lot of different things going on on the menu. So on the top left, we have an exit button. So we click that, the robot will leave its charge base station. This will allow access to control the robot as essentially an RC car. So I can go ahead and rotate it to the left. I can move it forward. I can move, kind of glide it about as it, it does have omnidirectional with the specific wheels. Um, and then on the bottom left, you have the capability to take a picture. So we can go ahead and just bring it towards us like this. There we are. And then I can take a picture by pressing the picture button. And then I can also record too by hitting the record button. Now this is all being stored in the local data uh, built into our specific robot. So if I click on the top left here, there's a photo button. I can click on local library and this will show you exactly what we've captured. So in this case here, we have the photo that we took and you can see it's actually a pretty good quality photo. I can zoom in and control that. And then I also have my video, which is also a good quality video. So if you click on cloud library here, you can go and order that service where the robot will connect directly to the cloud, allowing to go ahead and have access to this stuff later. 
So one of the cool things about the Scout is that it does have a cloud service. So the cloud service is free for up to a month. So it's great to go ahead and try out. Now this allows you to go ahead and get push notifications. Uh, for instance, if we set up a motion detect, for example, and it detects emotion, it'll notify us right away. Now let's go ahead and take a look at that. We can go into uh, monitor and then click on motion settings. So obviously this kind of gives you all the breakdown of what you can detect and what you can't detect. So for instance, a person, a pet, dog, cat, zone. Now the zone, you can uh, essentially create a boundary. So you can go and adjust this based on what you want it to detect or not. So in this case, I'll just do directly in the center and click OK. Um, and then from there, it's ready. Now, for instance, if I'm just kind of in the main menu here and I put my hand in front of the robot like this, there you go. Now it says motion detected. Uh, and I'll also get an email for that from that push notification as well. Uh, and I can click on this notification and watch the video of the motion that it detected. So in this case here, it detected my hand. So that's actually really cool that it's able to do that. So yeah, it just kind of gives you an idea of what the capabilities with this robot. Obviously the cloud service is great. Uh, it's a great addition to the robot. It essentially complements the robot overall. Now it also has a speaker button. So if we click this here, we can hear what the robot is hearing and it'll replay that back to our phone so we can communicate to it if we need to. Now it also has a microphone button so I can speak directly to it through my phone. If you ever have to speak to someone through it, you can use it like that. Now in the center of the screen, we do have a little map. So this here is showing exactly where the robot has been, kind of creating a trail or a path, which we'll see in just a little bit. Well, on the bottom right, we have a few different settings in terms of smart detect. Now this particular robot has motion detect. So if it does detect a human walking by or a pet or a specific zone that you're in, it will go ahead and notify you. Now this will work specifically on the charge station, so just keep that in mind. So click back here. Uh, and that is that in terms of movement. Now it does have a return to home button. Now, this does this autonomously, so it is actually quite accurate for what it is. All right, so you can see how it's kind of sensing where it's supposed to go and it'll line itself up. Essentially, I believe it reverses itself onto the charge station. It's that simple. After we return back to our base station, you can go ahead and create a path for the robot to scout, hence the scout robot. So I'll click path here and I can click the plus sign on the bottom left. Now I can name this path. So since we're on a table, we'll just call this table for now, just to show you how this works. And I'll click OK. The robot will leave its base station and now it's beginning its path. From there, we'll be able to control the robot and create our path manually. So move forward like this. Uh, then we can go ahead and turn left. We'll go forward again. Uh, we'll rotate itself. Kind of go like in a triangle area. There you are. And from there, you can either back up back onto the charger or you can click home base and it'll automatically return back to its uh, base station. I just love this return to home feature. It's actually so cool how it does this. Voila. Now if I click on patrol, uh, patrol allows us to go and schedule our paths. So in this case here, it says table and it shows you exactly what this robot is seeing in real time as well. Now, if I click on schedule, I can create my own schedule and assign that to our robot. So if I wanted to per se, follow the table path, so I'll click on table. Now I just received a notification that scouts start patrolling at a specific time following our table route. So, you can see how Scout is doing this all autonomously and it's kind of trying to see and give you back any feedback if necessary if it detects anything. All right, so now that's not patrolling, it's going to return back to its base station. So the next thing we're going to do is learn how to connect it via Amazon Alexa as well as Google Home. Now it's actually quite interesting what you can do with it because you can control it giving it voice commands. So let's go ahead and quickly connect it to Amazon Alexa. Now the first thing you want to make sure is that you're in Wi-Fi router mode. So you want to confirm that by looking at the top right of your app there and if it's not, you simply want to go ahead and press that button to switch over to the correct mode. After that, if you click settings, you'll see a new feature that says configure robot scouts Alexa skill. 
once you click that, it will give you a prompt to log into your Alexa account, which will thereby link the two together for you to control. Now, it does give you a few phrases that you can ask. Let's go ahead and try this out. Alexa, ask Robot Scout to move forward. Okay. <laughs> Alexa, show my Scout's camera. Oh, check it out. Now we actually have a live feedback of what the robot is seeing. You can even hear back and forth. I can hear myself talking. That's actually really cool. Uh, if I rotate, I could show myself. There is a bit of a delay. Now I just picked it up. <laughs> so how cool is that? But the fact that it works is actually really interesting. So it's a great way to go ahead and access your surveillance remotely. So this kind of gives you an idea of what you can do with it. So you can control it, you can have it move about, and then you can even have it take a photo, do different patrols, etc. Now, with that said, let's go ahead and see how we can connect it to Google Home. So we're gonna go and open up Google Assistant. And from there, we're gonna type in Ask Robot Scout. And this will open up the specific app to control the Robot Scout. So we can do this by simply typing in or using the microphone. Ask Robot Scout to move forward. Okay. <laughs> um, I can even have it like take a picture. So let's try that. Ask Robot Scout to take a picture. Okay. And then I click local library. I can see the picture that it just took. <laughs> So that's actually really cool what you can do with it. And yeah, I mean, the fact that you can control it and do a lot of different variations of maneuvers is actually a lot of fun. And it kind of gives you an idea what that's about. Now, the next thing we'll look at is called program. So under program mode, we can technically program this robot using a drag and drop display. So if I click on new, you can see on the top left here, we have a variety of different if then situations, motions, uh, smart AI, media, and different things that you can do. And so it's actually very easy and very convenient. Simply just drag and then just go ahead and add whatever you need to add. And you can go ahead and create your own custom program, which this robot can follow. Now, if I exit, I can try out some of these uh, pre-defaulted ones. So for instance, this here's an anti-clockwise uh, rotation. You can see uh, the whole entire setting right there and I can hit run now. So it's doing essentially uh, counterclockwise rotation <laughs> and I could stop and the robot will stop. So that's kind of nice that it does have that capability where you can go ahead and customize the programs, making it very easy and simple to use. All right, so moving on, uh, the next thing I'm gonna show you is how to go ahead and troubleshoot your Scout. Now, for instance, if you come across an issue, all you gotta do is click on settings, click on system, scroll all the way down, and click on firmware debug. Now, this here includes a built-in self-test system, AKA BIST. <laughs> so if we click this, it will go ahead and perform that action. Now, it's very important to note that you started off on the charging station. Now, the robot will perform some maneuvers. Uh, I'll kind of go out, spin in a circle, and then it'll make a screeching sound at the end. <laughs> so that was a loud screech right there. Uh, and now I should be getting the data to my phone indicating if there's anything wrong with it. There we go. So it says everything has passed and we're all flying colors. So this is great. Now, if there was a fail or there was an issue, it will report back to you, which you can go ahead and further investigate if necessary.